The hair is currently set to one level of subdivision, so let's select it and hit subdivide twice so we can have enough resolution to add some real detail to it. We'll change to sculpt mode. I'm going to go up to my options and turn off fast navigate just because that's going to make it draw a little bit nicer and my computer can handle the extra polygons. And now we're going to flip around to the back and we're going to start by creating the initial large forms. So I'm going to grab my clay brush. We are going to very much be relying on our pen pressure. So make sure that pressure is on for radius and for strength. I'm going to turn the strength up to about 0 0.75 and we'll go from there. So I recommend working from bottom to top just because that is going to make our pen pressure easier to work with. I'm going to come right down here to the bottom, push, and then as we drag up, push harder and harder. And that wasn't quite enough there, so I'm going to undo. And I feel we need a bigger radius, so I'm going to change that up to 135 or so in this case. We'll, we'll see if that's enough. And starting down here again, a little bit of pressure, increasing pressure on the way up and coming up through there. All right, and that builds up this uh, large form here but that tapers towards the bottom. So let's just keep doing that. And it's a little bit tricky to get just the right amount of pressure. So feel free to undo as often as you need to. We're just focusing on the bottom right now, those bottom tapers. The tops are gonna disappear because we're gonna layer in more up there. So let's grab our smooth brush and just smooth over the tops of those just so that they're not so problematic when we go to draw new brush strokes on top of them. And from there, let's start doing the next layer. We can come in here and do same thing, kind of tapering upwards, starting small. And again, we're going to just smooth out the tops so that they aren't conflicting with the next layer that we're gonna do. Check for any lumpy sections, kind of smoothing out those. Okay, we're starting to get some real depth and layering going on in there. And we will do a third layer. Let's try to get these all the way up into the parting line up there. A little bit of swoopiness on their way up can make them feel a little bit more like actual hairs. We'll just add a little bit more detail to these sections in there. From there we'll hit the smooth one more time on these tops. And what we should have now is some pretty good layering going on. Not really happy with that one. Can I hit my grab brush and pull that in a little bit? That's better. So from here, what we really want to do is emphasize these with our draw sharp brush. So I'm going to grab draw sharp. We want to make sure that our pressure is turned on for radius as well, so that we can get nice fading in and out. We're going to come up under the stroke settings and I'm going to turn on stabilized stroke. And this is just going to make it way easier to get really smooth uh, lines. And we are going to invert the brush by changing it right up there. And we're going to come in here and do lines to emphasize the shapes that we've already got. It's a little too small, I'm gonna increase that radius. That's a bit more like it. So a large enough radius that you don't end up with a thin needle point, more of like a tapered edge. I'm gonna reduce that strength actually. We'll try, we'll try back down to 0.5. That's more like it. Okay, so we'll leave it at 0.5 and a large radius. And coming in through here, we are redefining that ridge. So as we lift this part, it really emphasizes the shape uh, that we started with in there. And it's just gonna make it look like it's made out of these thick, tall edges that really have layering to them, which is gonna be really nice. And make sure you're in a little bit from that far edge. We're, we're working with the side edge uh, taper that's already there from the clay brush. We got pressure sensitivity on as well. So if we need to make subtler adjustments, just push a little less hard than you normally would. There's no real shortcut for this. You just gotta 
work your way through each of them. So that's feeling pretty good. What we need to do next is work on our top because it's been kind of left behind. So I'm going to grab the clay brush and this is more or less going to be the same technique that we've worked on before. So we've got clay, same settings, and we're working with the forms that were built up in the planning phase to just add strips of hair to take from the implication of flow into a little bit more of individual strands that flow. It's okay if they don't all come all the way through, we can just do another layer. The nice thing about hair is that it is a layered aspect of the sculpture. So if we need to do it in several passes, that is totally fine. In fact, it will actually add quite a bit of visual interest and quality to the hair as it uh, tucks in and folds under itself. Just try not to let it be obvious where they terminate. So we don't want just like an end terminating halfway through. All right, and that is feeling pretty good. The last thing that we wanna do is really emphasize some of these. So I'm gonna subdivide one more time. That'll get us up to where we can do really fine line work. Then we'll come back to our draw sharp brush and we're going to flip this back to the regular uh, subtracting mode. And we've got all the other settings should be about the same, although we will lower the radius a bit. And we can just start to emphasize this by carving inwards along these same lines. And depending on how sharp you want that to be, you're gonna to need to push harder or softer with your hen pressure. There's no real shortcut for this. You're just going to have to come in through there and sharpen these up by hand. Sculpting, they like to take as many shortcuts as possible, but they don't always exist. And sometimes it can be hard to remember where you've already hit with some of these. Make sure that you're looking over the whole thing, hitting any areas that need attention. That feels pretty good. And then from there, we need to emphasize the parting line. So I'm going to very similarly, just going to increase my brush radius a bit. And we're just going to drag through this area up in here. I'm following the flow just to really emphasize those shapes that we built in the beginning. Okay, and getting in between these as well. Start to push pretty hard with my pen pressure there. And that stabilized stroke is really coming in handy because I, my hand is not really stable enough to hit these areas in a perfectly smooth way without it. So we could call it good right there, but we are also able to refine this style. If we're not a fan of it being in these giant blocky chunks like this, we can break it down further into individual strands, which we'll learn how to do next in the bonus section of this video. Picking up where we left off, we've got the main flow of the hair established with these chunks sculpted in here. Now we can break it down further into individual strands. We can do that a couple of ways. I'm going to do it with the uh, crease brush, which is very similar to the draw sharp brush. We're going to come in here. I'm going to set my stroke to stabilize stroke, and we're just going to play around with the size a bit. Okay, we need more strength, I think. Let's turn that strength up. Okay, that's too much. Okay, and let's reduce the radius with pressure as well. Let's see, let's see if we can make that work. Starting off 
hard and then softening on the way up. I think we can work with that. So we will uh, come in here and just start splitting these. So it looks like it's made out of a couple of hairs flowing the same general direction. All right, and that just makes it look a bit more like it's made out of individual hairs. We can keep going with this idea, but the opposite direction, if we do our draw sharp, I'm gonna set this to positive again. And we can see what we get if we come in here and draw some thin lines just kind of coming down, trying just to add definition to the shapes that we've already established. Try to fade in and out. That's where pen pressure really comes in handy. And if we screw it up at the pen pressure, we can try to fix it with our uh, smooth brush in there. And don't follow the forms exactly. We're trying to add visual interest. A little bit of deviation is a good thing. At this point, it's like we can make out just barely some individual hairs. We can kind of split that down further. I'm gonna go back to the crease brush and start to crease really small, crease some of these edges here, split that into even more individual sections. We can break these forms just a little bit so that they flow into each other and it's a little bit less deterministic of where one begins and where one ends. Keep in mind that we're still trying to flow with the general shapes that we've already established. We're just breaking these up so that you can kind of envision individual strands without actually having to sculpt individual strands. It's a little counterintuitive because as soon as we actually sculpt the individual strands, uh, it looks a little too detailed and it, it's, it's not the most pleasing result usually. But with the implication of individual strands, we tend to get some really high quality stuff. The origins and the ends tend to be where we want those extra details. And again, you don't have to take it this far. Cutting it off at the previous version would certainly uh, be enough for some art styles. And that's starting to feel quite good to me. Just enough extra detail in there that it really feels like those clumps turn into strands. And the upper part, we can kind of give the same treatment to uh, if we just start to carve in these tips a bit. And don't be discouraged if you don't get it on your first try. This is not even my first try trying to make this recording, let alone my first try at hair in general. And it takes some time to get to where you're happy with the results. I'm gonna go a little bit further here and just do the same kind of emphasis to where it connects back into the part of the hair. Just so again, at the part and the tips, we want it to look like individual strands. Just gonna do one last kind of random pass, cleaning up any details that I feel could be stronger or maybe are too strong. We can now uh, come in and emphasize a handful of things with the pinch brush. If we grab pinch, large radius here. I'm going to um, pinch over these tips and this is gonna bring them together a little bit, make them feel a little sharper there. That's pretty good. 
gonna grab my grab brush just gonna scoot this part in a little bit there just gonna smooth out some of these lines because my pressure was not quite where it could have been to taper those out in a more natural way like I had wanted. We can do the pinch brush again on some of these tips. So we'll grab pinch brush and just kind of emphasize each of these tapers so they don't have such rounded tips. So they come up with a bit more of a natural tapering in and out. Anywhere where they look a little too round. Sharp transitions work pretty well for this style. And remember, it is art, you know? Don't try to um, focus too much on, oh, did I hit every single one of them? The more you do that, the more you are wasting your time focusing on details that are meant to blend in together anyway. Give them just the amount of treatment they really need to look good. That feels pretty good. And that's our hair.